What's up with it Raider Nation? It's your boy Raider Honcho and I'm back with a brand new video for you. If you're a fan of the Las Vegas Raiders and want to support this channel, please subscribe. Also, check out RaiderHoncho.com. Pick you up some of this nice merch, man. Go and support your boy. Also, don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Raider Honcho. Now, I know a lot of you out there, including myself, are perplexed on why the Raiders have not addressed secondary so far in free agency. I know some of y'all have given up on Richard Sherman. You've given up on Malik Hooker. But I am here to tell you we are going to be okay. We are going to bring in secondary help. You can guarantee it. And as Raider Hancho likes to say, you can book it. Okay, I promise you that we will address the secondary. Now, I know Gus Bradley loves to bring in... Um, Homegrown free safety, so you, you you know you you want him to draft the free safety that he can kind of build and mold and teach and make it to the safety he wants. But I am telling you right now, based on what I'm looking at on our roster and based on what I'm looking at what we need in this draft, I am almost certain we will find a free agency secondary and we will put it together. Doesn't mean we won't draft them, but I'm just telling you right now, guys, I'm here to be the voice of reason. I'm here to bring you that peace of mind like only Raider Hancho can do. Like only Raider Hancho can do, okay? Now I'm gonna get into some things right now, and I'm still I am still on the Richard Sherman boat. I still believe Richard Sherman will be a Raider because it just makes sense to me. All right, and as long as it makes sense, I'm going to think he's going to be a Raider until he's not a Raider. Right now, we haven't heard anything on Richard Sherman so far, but no news is good news. Okay, let's get right into it. Now, a lot of people think Richard Sherman is washed up and he's old and he shouldn't be playing anymore and we shouldn't spend the money on him. But let me just let me just let me just tell you, last year he played in five games. Right. And on 14, got 14 targets and got an interception. He wasn't getting smoked all over the field. He didn't look like he was over the hill in 2019 on 51 targets. He only gave up 26 passes, also had three interceptions, and had a PFF grade of 88.9, which was one of the highest in the league. This guy knows how to play football, man. He knows how to get it done. He's a leader, he's intelligent, and he's run Gus Bradley's system. So I just feel like it's very important for Trayvon Mullen and for Arnett, Amik Robinson, Jonathan Abram to have a guy like Richard Sherman in the building. It's more than just what he could do on the field. No, I'm not trying to say let's pay him to be a coach. I'm not doing that, but sometimes it takes the player on the field who's in between the lines with you to kind of relay those messages to you, okay? And I just think he can do that. The last thing Amik Robinson, Trayvon Mullen, Arnett need is another rookie corner. Now, with that being said, we do need to draft the corner, but I'm just saying you still need that veteran leadership. You need that big brother in the locker room. And even though Mullen's older than Arnett, he might not even be older than Arnett because Arnett came out a little late. He, he would be the big brother role, but they're like the same age and experience, okay? So that's not that's not enough veteran leadership for me. Now, the teams that are interested in Richard Sherman along with the Raiders are the Jets, New Orleans, the Colts, and the Seahawks. But the thing to me is, is the Seahawks only have $1 million in cap space, so that doesn't make sense. And New Orleans only has $1.5 million in cap space. Now, the last time I checked, even though the Raiders only have $4 million in cap space, it makes the most sense to me because the Jets have $40 million in cap space. The Colts have like $40 million in cap space. If he was going to go to one of those teams, why wouldn't he have already gone there? They already have the cap space to make him their guy, right? So if he was going to go there and the number was set, why wouldn't he be there already? So now, I, I just think it makes the most sense for him to be a Raider. He seems like a Gruden guy. He, he, he is a Gus Bradley guy, and it just makes the most sense. Now, when you talk about the Raiders only having $4 million in cap space, right? Let's get into some numbers, get into some, some cuts or some restructuring we can make, all right? Now, with the $4 million in cap space, we still have Jeff Heath on the books for three hundred uh, for $3 million which is actually 3.1 million. Jalen Rashard at 3.5 million. Arden Key is at 2.4 million. And Kyle Slaughter is at 920K, who is a quarterback, which I wouldn't even have been able to tell you that two weeks ago, right? So if we make moves on those guys, I know Heath might be tough because he is like the only safety. I think we still have Levitt on the, um, on the roster as well. But let's say you, you restructure Jeff Heath and get him down to a million for this year, then you, and then you do what you got to do. If we could get rid of Rashard's contract at 3.5, Arden Key at 2.4, and Kyle Slaughter at 920, I mean, you're talking about freeing up $9, $10 million, right? $9, $10 million, okay? So if you add that to the $4 million we have, that's $14 million right there available. That's $14 million available right there, but let's not stop there. Let's talk about if we restructure Derek Carr's deal, 
If we restructure Derek Carr's deal right now, you're looking at an extra five to eight million dollars. Five to eight million dollars. That would put us at like twenty-two million dollars, right? At high end, that would put us at twenty-two. At low end, that would put us at nineteen mil, right? So with that nineteen million, with that nineteen, or we could say eighteen if we don't cut. Jeff Heath, and we just restructure, right? Let's talk about $18, $19 million being the ceiling, right? Now, in my opinion, with $18, $19 million, you're not only going to bring in Richard Sherman, you're going to also bring in that safety. You're going to also bring in that safety. Let me break it down for you, right? Let's say we want to go Trey Boston. Let's say we want to go Trey Boston. Trey Boston last year was getting a base salary of $6 million. Richard Sherman was getting a salary of $8 million. That would be $14 million. Well, if we clear that cap space... We have enough to pay them what they were getting last year. But let's say since they were released, we can kind of negotiate. We kind of got a little bit of leverage on them, right? We don't have to pay them what they got last year. So let's say we get Trey Boston and Richard Sherman, each of them one year. Let's get them at one year. Let's break Trey Boston down to his to four million. Let's break Richard Sherman from eight million to six million. That's ten million dollars. That's $10 million. You could sign Trey Boston and Richard Sherman right now, in my opinion, one year, $10 million, both of them. And I know some of y'all think that's crazy, but it's really not. Because you might even get Trey Boston to get $3 million, give Richard Sherman 7 That's still $10 million. That would still leave us our $9 million in cap to deal with our uh, rookies, which is going to probably command $7 million, right? So, so, so let's follow along. But let's say, let's say we don't get Trey Boston. Let's say we ride with Heath. We ride with Levitt and we draft the free safety. And you just want to sign Richard Sherman for one year at what he was getting last year. That's $8 million. To me, that's a little bit of an overpay because I think Richard Sherman will be $5.5 to $7.5 million. But let's say he wanted his $8 million. You can afford that because we're at $19 million. That would still give you the $11 million you need to go and pay your rookies. Right? Like, th this is all making sense, right? This is all making sense. Now, let's say we wanted to go cheaper. Because, and in, in, in people don't realize this, but Trey Boston is probably a little more expensive than Malik Hooker, right? So let's say we go Malik Hooker. Malik Hooker's base salary last year was 3.5, and Richard Sherman's was 8. So let's say we knock them down a little bit. Hooker, you got released. We don't really know what your deal is going to be. We'll give you $2 million for one year. One year, $2 million. One year, $2.5 million. You're only taking a million dollar pay cut. And we still can get Richard Sherman at $7 million. Well, you're looking at signing two players for $10 million. Guys, I know this sounds crazy, but it's all plausible. It's all logic, right? You can actually do this. If the Raiders go ahead and free up some of that cap space with those players I named, you're looking at $14 million. If you renegotiate or restructure Carr's contract, you get another 5 to $8 million. Guys, we are going to sign a safety in a corner. And I know some of you are like, but Richard Sherman's so old. His dreads is turning gray at the bottom. He can't move like he used to. Well, you want Brian Poole. You want Brian Poole? Let's talk about Brian Poole. Brian Poole was only getting $5 million last year. $5 million. If the Raiders can convince Brian Poole, right, if the Raiders can convince Brian Poole to just eat, take a million dollar pay cut, let's give him $4 million, and you still can get Richard Sherman if you wanted to, to bring in a vet. But let's say you just wanted to get Brian Poole at the $4 million, you can still bring in a Trey Boston at his full $6 million. That'll give you $10 million. You could bring in Malik Hooker at his full $3.5 million. That'll give you $8.5 million. You can sign two players between $10 and $11 million. And right now, if the Raiders make those adjustments with those guys I named, if they restructured Carr's contract, you're looking at $19 to $22 million available. So if you go ahead and spend, let's say on the high end, on the high end, you go and get a safety at Sherman or Poole. On the high end, one year, $12.5 million. You still have the eight, nine million dollars to go sign your rookies. Guys, I'm here to tell you this is gonna get done. Raider Hancho said it, you best believe it, okay? I know a lot of things I say come true and a few things don't. But let's not talk about the things that don't. Okay, let's do the math. If I add the two, carry the one, divide this, common denominator is, we're going to get a secondary in this free agency. It is not over yet, guys. It is not over, and I'm here to tell you that. I hope I brought some peace of mind to you. I hope we can relax now. We are going to get either Sherman or Poole at corner, and we're going to get Hooker or Trey Boston at safety. You can book it. I'm telling you right now, it's going to happen. We are not going to just go into the draft with Jeff Heath being our starting safety. It's not going to happen, guys. I'm telling you right now, with, 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 with $14 million, we are going to go get both. We're going to go get both. 
And I'm not even lying to you. We have enough money. If we restructure Carr's contract, which I don't understand why they haven't done yet, but his birthday is the 28th, which is coming up in a few days. And happy birthday, Derek Carr. We're restructuring your deal. Just sounds like something John Gruden would do, correct? So I think that's what we're going to do. And even if we don't restructure, but we get rid of Jalen Rashard is 3.5, Arden Key is 2.5, that money right there is enough to go sign a pool, Sherman, or Trey Boston, right? So it just makes sense, guys. We're going to get somebody. Stay patient. Stay pat. Trust the process. I'm telling you right now, it's going to happen. We're going to get two secondary players still in free agency. If you haven't already, check out my mock draft and see what I did. Not even knowing we would do this stuff. But uh, if you like the video, like the video. If you like the content on this channel, please subscribe to the channel. If you like what I'm rocking, which is Raider Nation over everything, because it is the nation over everything, everything else falls underneath that. You understand that? If you like that, go head over to RaiderHotShow.com and go pick you up some. It feel good, man. Got you feel like you've been in the gym. I'm trying to tell you. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Raider Honcho. And until the next time, Raider Honcho out.